Live from the Watch Fox Studios, this is Good Day Columbia, starting your day the local way, right now. Good day, Columbia, in your town. I'm Britt Conway. We've got a great show for you this morning. We'll be live out here all the, all the way to 9 o'clock. Uh, and actually, of course, it's Friday, so that means it's a food Friday. Uh, this morning, Tyler's had a chance to teach you a little bit about the history of Camden. And the rest of the show, he's going to be out talking farm to table at Old McCaskill's Farm. Uh, Courtney King's going to be back with all of your sports news, uh, specifically what sports are like here in Camden. And then Destiny Chance will join us talking about the Fine Arts Center of Kershaw County. But we want to make sure that you're ready before you head out the door this morning. You got your headlines, you got your weather, which is why we're going to send it back in studio to check in with Brindy Clairvaux and Lauren Aleski. Hey guys, how are you this morning? Hey, good, good morning, morning Britt. Thank Brit. you so much for that. Well, we had fun last week when we were, uh, when I was at Batesburg. Batesburg, Leesville, yeah. uh, hanging out on the rides. I know Joe yes. and Courtney were oh, yeah. up on the Ferris wheel. I think Destiny and, and Courtney were riding the, the, uh, the merry-go-round. Yeah. So a lot of fun yeah, getting absolutely. to kind of explore the different cities around the Midlands. Absolutely, we really like that. Speaking of exploring this morning, folks, the Columbia Police Department making its internal affairs report public. It's the first of its kind. We'll tell you what the police chief had to say about the move. But before we get to that, Lauren, weather, it's getting warmer this weekend. It is. We've got a temperature yeah. increase through the day on Sunday, even Monday. I know he's not happy about it. No. He hates the warm weather. Yes. But let's take a look at what it looks like outside right now. It's dry, but you can see it's kind of hazy looking. Well, those are clouds to start us off this morning. We'll look at the current temperatures. Another mild start, low to mid 60s, 60 in Sumter. Columbia is at 64 out in Camden, where good day is this morning. It's 61 degrees, 64 in Orangeburg, 65 in Lexington, Aiken, and Newberry right now at 63 degrees. So we'll see that mix of clouds and sun for the morning and uh, the daytime hours for us closer to 70 by around 9. We're going to talk more about your Friday coming up in my next update. All right, Lauren, thank you so much for that. Well, this morning, it's a first for the Columbia Police Department. Chief Skip Holbrook released the results of a 2014 internal affairs report. He says it's all about working to build the relationship between police and the community. It's the first detailed report of its kind published by Columbia Police that has been made available to the public. The report gives a complete overview of the department's internal affairs activities. It shows more than 7,000 arrests were made in 2014 with no deaths in custody. 300 marijuana plants, guns, and plenty of cash. That's what authorities found during a drug bust. Now, five people are in jail because of it. You're actually taking a look at the picture of the marijuana that was found. Law enforcement agencies around the Midlands work together to make the bus. The suspects are all between 30 and 55 years old. Right now, they're all at the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center. You know, it's unfortunate we have to mention this again. Another child. This time, a newborn was found with drugs in their system. The child's mother has been arrested, though. Authorities say 24-year-old Ariana McKay admitted to smoking marijuana before she had her baby last month. Both her and her newborn tested positive for marijuana. Right now, she's being charged with unlawful neglect of a child. Well, to a developing story out of Berkeley County, now a deputy is in surgery after being shot several times outside of a gas station. The deputy's name is Will Rogers. His picture here is courtesy of our sister station, WCIV in Charleston. Rogers has been a law enforcement agent for 25 years now. Investigators say the shooting happened last night while Rogers was talking to a customer at an Exxon gas station. Someone wearing a mask came from behind the store and shot Rogers several times. That shooter is also accused of stealing someone's car. Well, that stolen car has been found, but still no sign of the shooter. Now, because he was wearing a mask, or we should say because the shooter was wearing a mask, investigators can't figure out who that shooter is. Well, an update now to a story we brought you yesterday on Good Day. Columbia police say they know who shot a Spring Valley High School teacher. Authorities believe Christopher Kent is their guy. Investigators say he shot a Spring Valley High School teacher, um, math teacher Wednesday morning. The shooting happened while Kent was um, trying to steal that teacher's car. Well, it turns out that stolen car was found last night at the Shandon Crossing Apartments off South Beltline Boulevard. If you know where Kent is, call Crime Stoppers at one triple eight crime sc Right now, there's a new board of trustees in place at South Carolina State. The so-called Fix-It Board was formed after a move by Governor Nikki Haley. Charles Wade was the state's former Commerce Secretary and one-time AT&T Vice President. James Clark previously served on the board at Benedict College. Retired professor and Clemson Vice President Doris, Doris Helms is the only woman on the board. 
She and Charleston attorney Jeff Vanzini were appointed Wednesday. Retired investment banker Milton Irvin, Charleston entrepreneur Steve Swanson, and Pittsburgh Steelers star Donnie Shell are also on that board. Shell actually graduated from SC State. While this new panel still hasn't set a date for its first meeting, that temporary board will serve until 2018. The governor signed a law last week removing the former trustees after lawmakers approved a plan to strip them of power. SC State is projected to be $23 million in debt by the end of next month. New details now after a state representative abruptly resigned from office. Nelson Hardwick stepped down Wednesday after a complaint investigated by House Speaker Jay Lucas. Documents show he was under investigation for sexual harassment. Hardwick said he was quitting because he wanted to focus on his health. His attorney says the allegations against him are all false. Well, speaking at the State House, coming up next week, a town hall, a town hall council, a town hall, we should say, on the controversial gas tax is taking place. An open forum discussion is set for May 21st at 7. You can tune into your town hall on air and online at watch.com. You can also submit questions via social media using the hashtag your voice, your future. Well, the fight for equality for the LGBT community could be running into a roadblock in South Carolina. South Carolina is one of more than two dozen states where someone can be fired because of their sexuality. Some say the law prote already protects them, but as our Terra Pettit shows us, there are plenty of others who say the law does not. My name is Dana Smith, and I am transgendered. House lawmakers heard testimony from multiple people Thursday about employment discrimination against the gay and transgender community. People have said that the protection is there. It's not. This legislation is not needed. We have equal rights under the law. Last week, the issue was set for debate on the House floor, but lawmakers chose to kick it back to this panel. South Carolina is one of 29 states where it's legal to fire an employee because of their sexuality. Because I'm gay, they can fire me. Last year, Lada Police Chief Crystal Moore was fired from her job. She argued it was because of her sexual orientation. Moore rallied support from the community and was eventually reinstated. That's all I ask is to be treated fairly. I think this bill is very threatening to the churches, ministries, and Christian businesses that wish to operate within the confines of their religious beliefs on marriage and God-given gender. Orrin Smith with Palmetto Family Council says he fears that if this bill were enacted, some of the provisions would endanger the state's Religious Freedom Act. The idea of uh, gender identity in particular is a relatively new concept and one that, that concerns us and how it actually may work work if it were put in our statute. But don't give me a new definition of what gender is. Don't say I can walk in this room as Bob Lyman and walk out this room as Roberta Lyman. That's not right. And you know it. You know it in your hearts, gentlemen. After hearing testimony for several hours, the House subcommittee adjourned without advancing the bill to the full committee. It's, it's about free, freedom, fairness, and opportunity. And with just two weeks left of the legislative session, it's likely the debate will not be brought up again until January. In the studio, Tara Pettit, Watch Fox News. Live from the Skywatch Weather Center is Lauren Oleski with your weather forecast. Good Friday morning, everyone. We are seeing a few clouds out there right now, but that's kind of making for a really pretty sunrise. So if you snag any photos of the, uh, of the sunrise this morning, send them my way. I would love to see them and share them on air here on Good Day Columbia. 65 degrees in Columbia right now. Nashville's at 71, very mild up there right now. Set, or 69, excuse me, in Atlanta. 70 degrees currently in Montgomery. Charlotte's at 63. Jackson, Mississippi at 69 degrees. Same with Memphis. 75 in New Orleans. Orlando, Florida at 73. Our setup for today, we've got this next system well up to our north, kind of slowly, very slowly forming high pressure off to our northeast today. This is going to dominate the forecast for our Friday. Because of the way winds move around high pressure, we're going to be seeing them coming in out of the southeast. That's going to be pulling in moisture off of the coast. That's going to be pulling in some clouds for today. A mix of clouds and sun, kind of similar to yesterday. We even have the chance to maybe see a little scattered shower at times, not a washout or anything, but because we've got more moisture in the region, you might see a little sprinkle out there. I'm not expecting much, though. Tomorrow, I think we're going to be seeing a little bit more sunshine than what we're going to see today, but then Sunday is likely going to be a repeat of today. So clouds and sun today, more sun tomorrow, more clouds back to the region on Sunday. We'll talk more about it in my next update. 
But you could see a scattered shower today. Sunrise at 6:23. So pretty soon with those lows today, or those highs today, excuse me, in the low to mid 80s. So it is Friday. We are in your town, and Tyler is in Camden on this Food Friday. Pretty sure he's out at a farm. Tyler, how's it going? So guys, you know, you're working in the barn all day, working with animals, working the farm, working the land, and you get hungry. How do you know when dinner's on? Oh, you ring the bell, baby! Just like that, the old McCaskill farm. We are live and local in Camden here on a Food Friday. Let me show you one other thing before we get cooking. Only on a farm here, like the old McCaskill farms, you get a morning sunrise like that. That is heaven on earth right there, guys. Stay with us. We're coming back live and local. We're getting our vittles on. <laughs> Live and local this morning in Camden, in your town, by the way. Today we are cooking at the old McCaskill Farm in Camden. Ashley's, we're going to call it Ashley's, right? Can I call it that today? Yes. Ashley's. Ashley Robinson, you are the, well, the namesake, of course, of Ashley, and you were formerly a McCask McCaskill. Yes. So that's where the old McCaskill Farm came from. Okay. I'm talking real, honest to goodness, country vittles and cooking this morning. I cannot wait. So we're going to do some potatoes, some canning, some beets. And some meatloaf, because nothing says Friday morning at 6.10 like meatloaf. That's right. <laughs> right? All right, so how do we do this? Oh, Ashley's meatloaf. I'm ready. Okay. Um, we have uh, some uh, grass-fed beef. Grass-fed beef right here. Look at that. Mm. All right. You're going to throw some onion in there. All right, some onions. We'll put it right down here. I'll throw some onions in there. Some bell pepper. All right, and guys, I am going to get some recipes from Miss Ashley here, so you can get those as well yes. at watch.com. You're going to mash, mash them up, mash them up, mash them up. The um, oh, these. tomatoes. Right here, like that. Them. Yep. And now mash it up. Yes. With my hands? Yes. All right, why not? That's um, how you do things down here on the farm at, at Old McCaskill's farm, anyway. Don't mash it up too much. Do you sing that song? You ever sing that song, your daddy? Old McCaskill had a farm. Yes. You ever? Yes. I'm trying to come up with new material. You know, her last name's Robinson. I was thinking, here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. She's like, yeah, I've heard that one, too. All okay, right. you can stop doing that. Do <laughs> Maybe I don't eggs. want to stop. This is good. Well, you don't want to over mix meat right. with, but do two eggs. <laughs> All right, two eggs. This is the patent. I, I suppose you know how to crack an egg with one hand, too, don't I you? I do not, actually. Oh, okay, it's very easy to watch. <laughs> do it. Perfect. Boom. That is our scrap bucket. We give it all of our scraps to the there chickens you so you can the throw it in there. Guys, this is a full working farm as well. We're going to learn more about the farm a little later on today, but chickens and, and there's probably some goats or three out there. Do you have goats? A bunch of goats. Yeah, see, I knew it. I knew it. Yes. All right, guys. All right. So, so you're going to put, I save all of my ends to my bread. Okay. Um, that way when you make croutons or bread crumbs, you have this, but I also put it in that. So mix that up. All right. All right. And... And this and becomes meatloaf. Salt and pepper. Just like that. And there you are. All right, guys. Okay. That is it. Throw it in the oven. How long do you put it in the oven for? Uh, about 35 minutes on 400. 35 minutes on 400. Guys, all right, we're going to stay live and local here at McCaskill's, Old McCaskill's Farm in Ashley's. We're going to try this meatloaf in a couple of minutes. It is going to be super yummy. Stay with us live and local on a Friday in Camden. Do not move. You're watching Good Day Columbia. Start your day the local way with Britt Conway, Friendy Clairvaux, Tyler Ryan, and Lauren Oleski's Skywatch Forecast. Welcome back to Good Day Columbia. We are live in your town this morning, and this morning we are live in downtown Camden. I'm joined now by a very special guest. Welcome, Mayor Tony Scully. He is the mayor of Camden. Thanks for joining me. This oh, morning. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Well, it's a beautiful day, and, and watching the sun come up this morning, it's been lovely here. It's great weather, so thanks to Lauren for that one. Um, I'm going to talk with the mayor a little bit about what it's like living in Camden, Camden, and you especially have a very unique perspective because you moved here from L.A. We did, yeah. My wife is a great joy, is a great singer and actor, and she came here to uh, perform at a party for the Carolina Cup and came back raving about this little place called Camden, and I said, let's go look around. <laughs> and when we got here, we were so taken by the beauty of this place, but particularly by the warmth of the people, which we'd never experienced at that level, and it changed our lives. And we just said, that's it. We're going to make whatever adjustments we have and come here. We we just we were I think we were lifted up and brought put down here, but uh, we are thrilled and it's never changed. We've never for one minute uh, regretted moving. And then you um, you actually have been very active in the community and you became mayor in 2012. I did. I was elected mayor after living here for seven years, <laughs> and I always say that says much more about Camden than it does about me. Uh, this town, this city, it's a small city, is very open to everybody. And people come here from all over the world, really, 
and um, it's just a great place to live and visit. So uh, what's next for Camden? What's exciting? What's on the cusp right now for this area? We have many cusps. <laughs> You're, we're sitting in this great park, which used to be the site of the most dilapidated building in town. We have this incredible team at City Hall, from our city manager to our great director of tourism to uh, our staff. And we talk and we work together and everybody gets along and we just move forward one project at a time. The next thing, next week we're launching uh, as, as a support, the city supporting the, uh, the second covered arena at the Equine Park, which is route uh, exit 101 off of I-20. So this is, of course, a very large equine community. And then the, the city arena you mentioned as well. We have a city arena as you drive into town on um, uh, off of I-20, exit 98. That's kind of an eyesore. By October, it will be a show place wow. for many, many uh, activities, conventions. We have the... Uh, the Boykin Spaniel Convention here every year. And Speaking of Boykin Spaniels, yeah. actually, in the next hour, we will have some of the Boykin Spaniels on the oh, show. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. You're going to want to stick with us. Right now, though, we do want to check in with meteorologist Lauren Alexi to see how your day's shaping up. I can tell you, though, Lauren, it's beautiful already out here, at least. Live from the Skywatch Weather Center is Lauren Aleski with your weather forecast. Yeah, not a bad looking start to get us going this morning. There are a few clouds outside, but that's kind of what makes it... Uh, but that's what makes the sunrise, I should say, really pretty. So low to mid 60s right now, another mild start for us. 65 in Lexington, Columbia's at 64. Same with Orangeburg today. Let's take a look at the setup that we're gonna be seeing for this weekend. Humidity and temperatures are on the rise. This is going to be our next system, but it is very slow moving. So through the weekend, we're not gonna see much movement with it, although we're gonna get more of a, uh, more of a defined warm front and cold front. Now this whole thing's going to be shifting east, but before it does, we're gonna be seeing a big increase in the moisture level and the heat level. Moisture plus heat makes rain. So on the eastern two thirds of the United States through the weekend, notice all of the widespread, not really widespread, but more of the scattered shower activity that is possible across parts of the country. So a closer look at home at what we're gonna be dealing with through the weekend. Today, a mix of clouds and sun across the state, it, kind of similar to what we had yesterday. Now, a scattered shower might pop up, nothing long lasting, no washout or anything, but you might see a little sprinkle out there today. Now, tomorrow, we'll see uh, more sunshine. Your Saturday looks pretty dry, looks pretty nice. And then by Sunday, I think we're gonna get some more clouds moving into the region and then a big bump in your rain chances for Monday and Tuesday when that front actually gets here. So we're gonna gradually be seeing a warm up over the next few days. Clouds and sun today, maybe a little sprinkle. Much better for tomorrow, Sunday, kind of the same thing as today, but it's not going to be bad. It's gonna get a little bit uh, more intense in terms of the rain and thunderstorm chances by Monday and Tuesday when the front actually gets here. And then we're clear Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Let's go send it back out to Camden. Courtney King is uh, sitting down with Britt now and she's got your morning sports update. How's it going, ladies? Thanks so much, Lauren. Well, you're going to want to stay with us, you guys. Your morning sports update is coming up after the break. Courtney King is going to be with us. And, Courtney, uh, we're talking about a really unique museum coming up. Yeah, coming up in sports, we're going to talk. Uh, we're actually going to get a tour of the only steeplechase museum in the country, or a museum dedicated to the sport of steeplechase racing. It's pretty exciting. I'm looking What's forward next? to it. Well, stay with us, you guys. DJ Columbia is live in your town. And this morning, we're in Camden. We'll be back in just a moment. Live from the Watch Fox Studio, here is Courtney King with your sports update. Welcome back to Good Day Columbia. I'm Britt Conway. We are live in your town this morning. And this morning we are in Camden, home of a very unique uh, museum. I'm joined now by Courtney King. Uh, Courtney, this is the only one of its kind. That's right. It's the only museum in the country that's completely dedicated to steeplechase racing. If you don't know what that is, and I learned all about it, <laughs> it's back in the day, the horses used to race from steeple to steeple. So it's a longer oh. distance race. These horses are actually, they actually last longer because it's not as hard on them. It's not as fast sprinting. It's kind of like being a cross country runner as opposed to being like, you know, a sprinter. A sprinter. Okay. So it was very interesting. But I got a tour of the museum. It was pretty cool. So take a look at it. What are some of the like the main attractions of the museum like, and some of your favorite things? Well, um, the F. Ambrose Clark Award, which is this is a permanent display. This is um, a, an award given in in memory of F. Ambrose Clark. And these are people who have given the most to steeplechasing in their lifetime. And the latest inductee into the F. Ambrose Clark Award was Jonathan Shepard. That's where we were just okay. a few minutes ago at his barn. So you, then you're gonna get up on your, the ball of your feet like this. 
pull yourself up out of the saddle. Oh. Balance yourself right here on his neck. Like, take your hands, cross the reins like here, and balance your fingers like right there on his neck. Now, uh-huh, now, just start pushing on his head. There you go. Faster. Yeah. So this is how they yes. prepare? Yes. My quads yeah. are like yes. burning. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And they'll sit here and go just and go. I mean, practice yeah, they'll that? go wow. like seven or eight minutes. So what's like the best like, trophy in here? Um, the Colonial Cup. Crafted in Ireland in 1704. Mm -hmm. wow. I went to Miami to... Um, Palm Beach to do the steeplechase down there, and I was hooked. Yeah. So now I do not only executive director of the Steeplechase Museum, which I love, um, but I'm also still traveling every weekend to go to a different steeplechase and do the photographs on the weekend. So as we've seen, Camden known for polo and steeplechase racing, but they've also got a pretty interesting baseball history. Last hour, we talked about Larry Doby, the first African-American to play in the American League, but there's actually a current baseball player right now in the majors. It's Michael Cohn with the Atlanta Braves. He was actually originally drafted by the Los Angeles Angels back in 2008. He actually played at College of Charleston as well. Cohn made his MLB debut with the Angels in 2010. Now, speaking of baseball, NCAA... Cox. They beat number one LSU 10 to 7 last night. Carolina improves to 32 and 22 overall, 13 and 15 in the SEC. Max Schrock started it out hot early for the Gamecocks with a solo homer in the first. Carolina trailed 6 to 2, but a four run sixth inning tied it up. USC took a 10 4 lead in the bottom of the seventh. And Britt, you've been calling it looking like a I'm home so match. impressed watching them turn yeah. things around. I mean, the big beginning of the season was like, what are you doing? Out yeah, there? It was a, well, the middle, too. It's like, yeah. what, what's happening here? <laughs> Um, but they took two out of three from number two team. Hopefully can take two out of three from number one. But like we were talking about during um, the story playing, that if you saw me on that fake horse thing, that was um, my favorite part. Riders actually go in and use that to get in shape for Very racing. Cool. So well, pretty we have a lot more coming up in a little bit. We're going to check back in uh, with a uh, friend of Clairvaux and Lauren Aleski in just a little bit. We're live in Camden this morning. Live from the Watch Fox Studios, this is Good Day Columbia. Starting your day the local way, right now. Welcome back to Good Day Columbia. We're live in your town this morning, and we are in Camden. A big thank you to Lori Slade Funderburg for the coffee this morning from Books on Broad. Um, they, they actually have a big event coming up tomorrow night from 6 to 8, Ladies Night Out, if you want to if you want to join them here in Camden. So thank you for the coffee this morning. We've got a great show for you. We're learning all about polo. We're learning about the great athletes that came from Camden. We're checking in throughout the morning with Tyler. He's talking farm to table at Old McCaskill's farm. And Destiny's been down here talking about the really great aspects of Camden. Camden. We're going to be learning a little bit about the uh, Fine Arts Center of Kershaw County coming up here in a little bit. But of course, we want to make sure you're covered with all of your latest headlines and your weather before you head out this morning, which is why we're checking in right now with Lauren Aleski and Brittany Clairvaux. Good morning, guys. How are you? Hey, good morning, Brittany. Good morning, Brittany. We're holding down the fort. The Gators are holding down the fort. I had to say that. <laughs> exactly. We'll probably throw that in there another time yeah. uh, this morning. Well, talk about your headlines this morning. A Berkeley County deputy is in surgery after being shot several times at a gas station. We'll have the latest in just a moment. But first, the weather. This weekend, Lauren... If I'm making plans outside, it's, what should I do? It's getting a little warm out there. We're going to mm -hmm. go to the upper 80s by Sunday. We're going to hit 90 next week. I know no one's happy about that. But this weekend, it's actually not going to look too bad for us. Let's okay. take a look at the temperatures right now, though, as you step outside. Low to mid-60s. A mild start. Again, kind of a repeat of what we're used to seeing this time of year. 60 degrees in Sumter. Lexington is at 64. 61 out in Camden, where our Good Day Columbia friends are this morning. 65 in Lexington. Orangeburg and Saluda at 64. And 63 in Newberry. And in Aiken, we're going to talk more about what the rest of your Friday looks like coming up in my next update. All right, Lauren, thank you so much for that. Well, it's a developing story out of Berkeley County. We've been following it all morning so far. A deputy is in surgery right now after being shot several times outside of a gas station. That deputy's name is Will Rogers. His picture here is courtesy of our sister station, WCIV in Charleston. Rogers has been with law enforcement for 25 years now. Investigators say the shooting happened last night while Rogers was talking to a customer at the Exxon gas station. Someone wearing a mask came from behind the store and shot Rogers several times. 
That shooter is also accused of stealing someone's car. That stolen car has been found, but still no sign of the shooter. Now, because the shooter was wearing a mask, investigators can't figure out who the shooter is. Well, an update now to a story we brought you yesterday on Good Day Columbia. Columbia police say they know who shot a Spring Valley High School teacher. Authorities believe Christopher Kent is their guy. Investigators say he shot a Spring Valley High School math teacher Wednesday morning. The shooting happened when Kent was trying to steal that teacher's car. Well, it turns out that stolen car was found last night at the Shandon Crossing Apartments off South Beltline Boulevard. If you know where he is, call Crime Stoppers at one triple eight crime sc we move now to sexual assaults on college campuses. Unfortunately, it's the reality now across the nation. Recent cases at the University of Virginia and Vanderbilt have sparked a nationwide debate on how colleges handle these issues. So what about here at home? What about USC? How are they protecting their students from these horrific events? Our Melanie Barden has more. Sexual assault on college campuses, a once unspoken issue that is now at the forefront of a national debate. According to the White House Task Force report protecting students against sexual assault, one in five women are sexually assaulted while in college. It's, it's there when you're forced to sit in the same class or stay in the same dorm with a person who raped you. The University of South Carolina is no exception. Applying national statistics to USC would mean that roughly 540 women from the freshman class of 2014 will experience a sexual assault during their four years at the university. It's actually more prevalent than you think it is. However, previous records don't seem to reflect those numbers. According to USC's most recent report for calendar year 2013, there were only 10 reported sexual assaults on campus. This means only 10 victims victims in 2013 decided to notify police. Sexual violence in general is severely underreported um, due to a variety of factors, the victim blaming that I talked about, um, the fact that people may not understand that what happened to them was actually a sexual assault. Students at the university agree that this issue is not clearly defined. There's people that I don't think realize that they are being sexually harassed. No, I can't give you an accurate, uh, an accurate definition. I wouldn't have a formal definition of sexual assault. I feel like I haven't, you know, learned that much about it. Experts say the reason for this is because of the very nature of the problem. It's considered a private matter. We probably don't want to know about it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you know, so it's like, well, if I don't have to think about it, maybe it's not happening. Well, it does happen. It happens in any community of 30,000 plus people. USC implements programs throughout the year to warn students about sexual assault. But a very unusual and unlikely partnership sparked up last year between the Sexual Trauma Services of the Midlands and the Interfraternity Council here at USC. Educate our members is one, you know, how to identify it, because uh, you know, if, you if you don't see it, you don't know what it is and whatnot, it's something that you can't stop. Um, and then two, how to prevent it. Members of Save It, the on-campus resource for victims of sexual assault, say they have plans for better educating students next school year, including special training programs for student leaders. They will get trained as trainers to then teach others, other students, how to stand up, how to take a stand, and so that eventually that ripple of hope will go out or across campus. A ripple effect that will hopefully spark a conversation. It happens a lot more than I what I expected, um, which is pretty, pretty shocking. And prevent USC from being just another statistic. In Columbia, Melanie Barden, Watch Fox News. Well, if you'd like to find out more information about sexual assault awareness events and what support resources are available, head on over to our website at watch.com. Lauren. Randy, good morning, everyone. So a few showers in Alabama and parts of Georgia. We're starting off with some clouds this morning in uh, South Carolina, but it's actually making for a pretty nice sunrise. So if you see any cool photos or any cool uh, looking, if you see the sunrise and it looks really cool, do you take a picture of it and send it our way? We would love to see them this morning. Temperatures right now, low to mid 60s, same thing. Haven't really moved too much. Not a bad day for us, looking okay, especially for the morning. So we're starting off with some clouds, but we're gonna be seeing some sunshine throughout the daytime today. We're going to go up to about 75 degrees by around 11 o'clock, low 80s this afternoon. So seasonal temperatures, humidity is not unbearable, but you might notice it a little bit more today. Overall, not too bad for your Friday. We actually could even see a little scattered shower for maybe 5, 10 minutes. Nothing major, though. Low to mid 80s, like I mentioned, 82 in Columbia today. Orangeburg and Sumter, about 83. 81 in Manning for the afternoon. So I'll show you that here in my future watch. I mentioned a little shower. So a mix of clouds and sun today, very similar to what we dealt with yesterday. 
once we get some of the daytime heating in, maybe a little speck popping up. I'm really not expecting much, but because we have more moisture and more heat moving into the region, a chance of a shower or two, uh, you can't rule it out. Now, tomorrow, I definitely think we are going to be seeing more sunshine than we're going to see today. But then by Sunday, a few more clouds kind of return back to the area. So a little bit of a back and forth across uh, the area for us. So staying cloudy and mild for tonight. Sunset is at 818, about 61 degrees for this overnight low temperatures. We're going to go send it back out to Camden. And uh, Destiny Chance is now joining our Brick Conway learning about uh, some cool things around the town. How's it going, guys? Thanks so much, Lauren. Well, Destiny Chance joins me now, and coming up after the break, we're going to be talking about the Fine Arts Center of Kershaw County. Pretty cool place. Very cool place. You'll be surprised why a lot of people, young and old, like to gather there. And it's been around for quite some time, too. Yeah. I'm interested. We'll have the history of the Fine Arts Center of Kershaw County coming up after the break. We are live in your town, and this morning, we're in Camden. Good day, Columbia. We'll be back right after the break. You're watching Good Day Columbia. Start your day the local way with Britt Conway, Friendy Clairvaux, Tyler Ryan, and Lauren Oleski's Skywatch Forecast. Welcome back to Good Day Columbia. We're live in your town this morning, and this morning we are in Camden. I'm Britt Conway. Hi, and I'm Destiny Chance. You know, this week, I was able to come to Camden. Yeah, you were lucky. You got to get out here early and see what this is all about mm -hmm. uh, and do a kind of a little tourist uh, event here. Yeah, a little preview. Now, Camden, it's deep rooted in history, beautiful greenery and culturally diverse, home to about 6,900 people. But with a small population, you'd be surprised what really ties this town together. Just take a look. It's a place where senior citizens gather to knit. <laughs> In elementary school, kids learn to appreciate art. This is Camden's Fine Arts Center, the heartbeat of Camden. It was started 40 years ago, and it was some very visionary leaders that recognized the importance of the arts, the importance of having a cultural hub in the community, the importance of bringing people together, because that's what the arts really do. Kristen Cobb is the executive director here, a place where you'll find everything from dance to sculpting, painting, knitting, and music. The list goes on. I think the arts allow children to express themselves in a different way. And it's what happens in the theater that attracts Camden's youngest generation. Doing a theater production is kind of like a sports activity in the sense that you have to be focused, you have to work hard, and you meet new people and you connect with new people and I think that's the greater good where we can see that these folks know how to work together. Nine-year-old Caroline Cassidy is one of them. She's been a part of the dance program for the past few years. My favorite part was going on stage and dancing because a lot of my friends were there watching. It made me feel really happy that I was getting on stage and doing stuff. Well the Fine Arts Center of Kershaw County is a real gem for this entire area. From old to young, <laughs> from mitters to artists, these rooms, these buildings, this center will continue to bring this community together for generations to come. It's a big deal. Okay, now, Kristen Cobb, she told me a really nice story that I've been thinking about since Tuesday. She said that a little girl, she is very much of an introvert, and she was bullied in school. She joined the Fine Arts Center. She went to this hip-hop dance club where these New York people that came down for a hip-hop dance club, she tried out, she made it for the team, and she ended up being more of an extrovert, and her Aww. mom thanked the Fine Arts Center because of all of that. So it wouldn't have had that opportunity otherwise. What a great place to bring people together of all different ages, too. Yeah, It looks absolutely. like they have a lot of great events that they, uh, the community can take part in as well. Yeah. You must have enjoyed your morning there. Those kids are so cute. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And you can always go to our website at watch.com where this web story will be posted for more information on the Fine Arts Center. <laughs> Thanks so much, Destiny. Well, make sure you stick around, you guys. We're going to check in with Tyler now. He is uh, enjoying a food Friday and talking farm to table. Hey, Tyler. Well, Destiny, you know what? A few minutes ago here at Old McCaskill's Farm, we made some awesome meatloaf from scratch with Miss Ashley Robinson. I'm going to give it a try here. Hold on one second. That is some good meatloaf fresh out of the oven here at Old McCaskill's Farm. Up next, though, we're talking canning. Oh, some mashed potatoes gravy and no Dracula garlic potatoes. No Dracula, because vampires and the girl, you get that right. Stay with us, we're live and local at McCaskill's Farm in Camden.
You know what, guys? I don't know if you can actually top the meatloaf that Miss Ashley Robinson just made here at the old McCasco Farm in Camden, but we're going to try with some mashed potatoes and garlic. Now, the first thing is kind of cool. You guys do a lot of canning. You can, like, what, what potatoes and beets and, and stuff, right? Squash, um, right? pickled okra, corn, um, anything that you can grow, you can can. Really? Yes. All right, so we're talking potatoes today. So we're actually going to start with the taters that you have actually canned already. Yes. So we open those up. So we, I, I don't even know what's going on there. But, <laughs> yeah. So you put them in here. Of course, you want to strain. You want to yes. strain the potatoes. So you go ahead and put those in here. And these are just chopped up baked potatoes, right? Right. Okay, very good. Yes. And so, what's so good is you can just open the can and throw them in there right. and you don't have to worry about it. And how long, when you're canning, how long can those things stay good on my shelf? Uh, years. Forever. Yes. I like that. Forever. You just want to make sure it seals and when, you know, right. if you do can, when you go to open the top, make yep. sure it pops. If it does not pop, throw it out. Very good. See? If it doesn't pop, throw it. See? That's a tip from <laughs> Ashley Robinson here at Old McCaskill Farm in Camden. All right. So you got the taters in there. Are they soft? Can I see? Can I just? Are they? Yeah, they're really they soft. Are. Okay. You can make uh, potato salad with oh, it. All right. Well. Um, so we're going to add uh, the butter. All right, this is butter. And which is a little Paula Deen. Amish Here we go. Butter. Amish butter. Yes, the best butter ever. All right, and what's this? That's mayonnaise. A little mayo. Are you yeah. talk, is it Miracle Whip or is it like Hellman's or Duke's? Um, Hellman's. Okay, very good. Because yes. I'm not a real big Miracle Whip fan. I'm just going to throw that out <laughs> no, there. No, no, no. Okay. And then you want to just squeeze the garlic into it. So freshly squeeze garlic and, in here. Yes. All right. And then, you know, however. You can put as much you garlic as you want, that's for yes. sure. You know what I say? I eat a lot of garlic, and I'm going to tell you this. I've never been bitten by a vampire. <laughs> no, no, it's true. So I eat a lot of garlic, and I've never been bitten by a vampire. You, you guys do the math. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying, but I'm saying. Mm -hmm. All right, so <laughs> we got a little bit of time. All right, so we got that in there. We got all the ingredients. Yes, and you just want to whip them up. You can mash them, or okay. I just, this is the easiest way to do it. That's right, whip them in there. You just whip them up. Now, do you have to, after you get them whipped up, do you, how do you heat them? How do you get them up to, uh, to temperature? Well, you can um, warm the potatoes up before you put them in there, okay. and then everything will kind of, you know, melt. But sure. once you have them whipped up, just put them in the, in the um, oven. Guys, we're going to put some recipes for you as well at watch.com slash food Fridays on our Food Friday segment brought to you by U.S. Food Chef Store down on St. Andrews Road in Columbia. All right, these things ready to go? Yes. Oh, I cannot wait. I love mashed taters. All right, and you got to say taters out here on the farm, by the way, because we are, wait till you guys, in about an hour, we're going to take a little tour of this farm. It's an actual farm that's open to the public. You guys can check it out, but I'm talking chicken and ducks, and, and I heard a rooster out there. It's a goat or three as well. All right, let me reach in here. Thank you very much, Miss Ashley. There it is, potatoes. My God, girl, that's good. <laughs> Ashley Robinson, Old McCaskill Farm here. We'll get your directions, everything at watch.com on a food Friday. This is so good. We are live all morning long in your town in Camden. That is, if it's your town, what were you supposed to say at the end of this break? I don't remember. And now we're going to check with Lauren Aleski and the weather. And now we're going to check with Lauren and Le Lester. Aleski. Aleski with the weather. <laughs> live from the Skywatch Weather Center is Lauren Aleski with your weather forecast. Well, thanks, guys. Tyler, that food looks absolutely delicious. A couple clouds to get us started this morning. Need something to do this weekend? How about you head out to Lynchburg, South Carolina? Go to the Woods Bay uh, State Park about an hour and a half east of here. Not too bad. Not a bad looking weekend for us. Maybe a passing shower today, but really um, not looking too bad out there. The moisture's on the increase, though, so we do have the chance of a little afternoon shower today. We've got a front on the way. Temperatures are going to be warming all ahead of it. We're going to go to the upper 80s. By Sunday, we'll be about 87 degrees on your Sunday afternoon. So here's that setup we've got in store for the weekend. A very slow moving system, really going to be taking its time as it attempts to shift east. What happens ahead of a, uh, ahead of a cold front and up under a warm front? South flow, lots of moisture moving up into the region. Take a look at this future watch across the eastern two-thirds of the United States. A lot of shower activity expected. Now, a lot of it's very scattered across the region, but nonetheless, because we're dealing with so much moisture and so much heat, Good chances for some showers uh, today, tomorrow, and Sunday. And the, as the closer that system actually gets to us, the better our rain chances are. So today, mix of clouds and sun, very similar to yesterday. Maybe a passing shower. Tomorrow looks pretty nice. Sunday, the same thing we're going to see today. Passing shower possible, mix of clouds and sun. But as that front actually gets here, much better rain chances return to the forecast for us. And then we're going to be dry by the time we get to Wednesday and Thursday of next week. So stay with us. We're going to be back with more Good Day Columbia and hashtag watch this coming up after the break. Welcome back to Good Day Columbia. It's time for hashtag watch this. I'm Joe Pollock with uh, Courtney King, who does sports here at Watch Fox. And I'll tell you, Courtney had the privilege of actually recording our next watch this. See, one of the biggest 
events in the, of the year here in Camden is the Carolina Cup. You know, everybody gets dressed up, their mm -hmm. fancy hats and things like that. So not only were they dressed up, but something very special happened this past year at the Carolina Cup. And Courtney got a chance to be there firsthand. Watch this. <laughs> if you don't like it, can I have it? <laughs> this was the first event as a couple we ever went to that was not something that I'd been to or she'd been to and we dragged each other along and uh, nothing better than with a bunch of friends in a place where once we leave we won't have no internet or phones or nothing. We're just going to enjoy this time. <laughs> All day long, he was whispering. I'm like, what are you whispering about? But he, he told me I had to wait six months, so I wasn't quite sure it was coming. <laughs> Big congratulations to Chad Niesler and Aaron St. George. So those, those were their names, of course. Um, I had no idea about this proposal when I got to the Carolina Cup. I just went, like you mentioned, the big hats. I just went to get some B-roll for the news that day, just shooting some cute hats. I was like, oh, that's a cute hat, that's a cute one. And then this guy came up to me and said, there's going to be a proposal over at that next tent. And so I captured it. I, we, we actually put it in the newscast that night, and then I made a full video for the couple. And oh, so you got, they got a copy of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, yeah, and so it's actually almost close to 700 views, too. That's so they've been sending it out to their friends and family, so it's pretty cool. Well, you can also send us anything that you have. Maybe there's a crazy video that you've recorded with your cat, dog, or baby, or, or maybe you've got something sweet like that proposal. You can always send it to us using the hashtag watch this. We'll be back. It's live in Camden in your town on Good Day Columbia coming up.